Hey everyone, it's Guilherme and in this video we are going to cover a game juice demo that we created using Godot version 3.1 and in this series you're not only going to see how this demo works but we're also going to see how we implemented these systems so you can apply this into your own games and by the way this demo was created based on the talks by Martin Jonasson and Petri Puro sorry if I mispronounced the name which is called Juice It or Lose It and also on the talk by JW from Vlambeer called The Art of Screen Shake. So if you want to learn more about juicing your games, make sure to watch both of these talks. Now, before starting the demo, we have to first understand what is game juice. And if you search on the internet, you're going to find several different explanations and also definitions on what game juice is. But one thing is certain, and that is that game juice is something that has more to do with game design, with how you want your game to feel. And one definition that I saw that really stuck to me and I'm pretty sure that it comes from one of these talks. I just don't remember which one it is. But game juice is about giving the maximum output to your player based on the minimum input. And of course, that depending on the type of game that you are developing, this is going to be different. But in sum, what you want to do is give to your player as much feedback as possible and make his experience with your game as pleasant as you can. Now, let's play our demo and see how it works. And I'm playing on window mode currently, but if you test this on your machine, it's going to be on full screen. And you can see that I have only one enemy and I can shoot him. And after a few shots, he's going to die. And the same is true for the one on the bottom. And well, you can look at this game and you can think that it's a pretty okay game, but there are several ways that we can make this game look better and actually feel better. To do so here on this demo, if you press tab, you're going to open this menu. And here we have several options that we can toggle on and off and see how our game is going to behave by changing these settings. So let's begin by adding screen shake. And here you can see that whenever we hit an enemy, we get this feedback that our screen starts to shake. We can add frame freeze. The frame freeze is going to freeze our frame when we hit an enemy. And this is going to, once again, increase the feedback that we have whenever we hit something. And this is going to feel better to us. This is something really common on fighting games. And you have to be careful not to overdo this or else it's going to feel like your game is just laggy. If I turn twinning on, we won't see anything, but as soon as we restart our game, you can see that we have this nice effect when our level starts, and this just gives the game a more polished feel. If we turn visual effects on, we're going to see that whenever we hit an enemy, he's going to blink. We also start to see some shells on the ground whenever we shoot. We also have some effect on our barrel, and also the explosion on our enemies whenever they get killed. We then get to the particle setting, which is going to add a particle to our bullet whenever it's fired. We then have two settings that are going to affect how our enemies work. One is going to increase the spawn rate of them and the other is going to turn them into weaker enemies. This is going to make our player kill enemies faster and also stay in action longer. So this is going to make our player feel more powerful. And lastly, we have some settings that all have to do with how our gun works. So we can increase the size of our bullet. We can also increase their speed by activating rapid fire. And we can add some bullet spread, which is going to change the angle in which our bullets are fired. And finally, we can increase the fire rate by sliding this slider. And with these settings turned on, our player is going to kill way more enemies and feel way more powerful while having a lot of feedback while playing our game. And lastly, we have a setting that's really looked down, especially when you are just starting to develop games, which is the sound. And with this turned on, we now have sound for our bullets, for our explosion, and also for when we hit enemies. And as you can see, this is not something that is scientific, but our game does feel better when we add all of these effects to it. And we went from a game that looked boring to something that looks way more appealing to our player. It's way flashier and also looks way more polished. Alright, so now that we know some of the techniques that we can add to our game to make it more juicier, we are going to see how they are implemented. We are not going to cover all of them in this video or else this video would be too long. And here we are going to see how to implement the frame freeze and also the camera shake that you saw on the demo. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. You are going to see some scripts that are coupled to our juice control system, which is the system that we use to toggle them on and off. This does not change the core functionality of them, so you can still use them and apply it to your own games. And if you don't feel like developing your own system, you can always just get the code on GitHub and start using it with minimal tweaking. So with that said, let's open our frame freezer script. On the top, we have an exported variable that is used to define how many milliseconds we want to freeze our frames. 
on our ready function, we are going to loop through all of the nodes that we have in our frame freezer group and connect to their frame freezer requested signal by connecting it to our own frame freeze requested function. Now, when this function gets called, we are first going to check if we are enabled and if we are not, we are going to return from it. If not, we are going to reach out to our OS class and call the delay milliseconds function by passing to it the delay milliseconds variable that we just saw. And in the end, this is the line that is responsible to give this effect to our game. So you can see how easy it is with just a few lines of code to add a nice effect to our game. All right, now let's go back to our game scene. And the camera shake effect is on a script on our shaking camera. We can find it inside of our levels folder instead of the camera folder. Here we have a camera scene. And you can see on our inspector that we have a few exported variables. We have an amplitude, which is how much we are going to move our camera when it's shaking, a duration, which is the duration of our shake, an easing function, and a boolean, which is turned on when we want to shake our camera. So let's open its script and see how it works. You can see that our shake variable has a setter which is called set shake. And whenever we set this variable to true, we are going to also set our process to true, which as you can see on our ready function is initialized with false. So our process function is not going to be called whenever we start our game, only when we set the process to true. Here on the process, we begin by calculating the damping that we're going to use when moving our camera. And this is done using the is function that receives the time left that we have on our timer divided by the wait time that we have on it. And this is defined by our duration variable and also by passing to it the damp easing, which again is an exported variable. And we then calculate our offset, which is done by creating a random value, both for the X and Y of our vector two by passing to it the amplitude and our negative amplitude multiplied by our damping. And with this, we have a nice shake effect that slowly comes back to the center of our screen because it is eased using our damping. Here you can see that when our timer times out, we are going to set our shake to false. And note to the fact that we are using the self keyword before. This is because we want to make sure that our setter is going to be called when we are setting the value of shake to false. The on camera shake requested function is called whenever a node that is in a group emits a signal. This is going to make our camera know that it should start shaking. And we first check if we are enabled. Again, this is due to the fact of our toggling system that we have on this demo. And if that's the case, we are going to set shake to true. Here we have the setter of our duration. And lastly, we have the set shake function, which is a setter of our shake variable. And here, all of what we are going to do is set our process to the value of shake. So if we set it to true, this means that we want to shake. And if that's the case, we are going to start our timer. This way, whenever it times out, we are going to set shake to false once again and stop shaking our camera. The last function that we have just connects the camera shake requested signal of all of our camera shakers to the on camera shake requested function. And that's all for this first part of this series. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. All of the art that you saw on this video are created by Kenny and you can download them on the top down thing pack. The sound that we created was using BFXR. And as always, you can find a complete code for this project on the GitHub. The link is in the description of this video. Make sure that you have Godot version 3.1 to run it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.